This tutorial is about Structure Free. Structure Free is the sample player that's part of the Creative Collection and Pro Tools. So let's get started. The first thing that we will do is create a track that's a stereo instrument track. And click Create. Uh, you want to make sure that in your column view display you have instrument, your inserts, and your inputs and outputs showing. I'm going to go ahead and name this track Structure. And go ahead and uh, record and enable the track. To launch Structure Free, we're going to come over to Insert A and instantiate a multi channel plugin. Go down to Instrument and select and click on Structure Free. This brings up the main win window for Structure Free. Uh, over here on the left hand side, right underneath where it says Structure Free, you're going to see the default patch is Sine Wave. This default patch will show up each and every time that you launch this plugin. To change the patch, you can click on the word Patch and it'll bring up the patch menu. And the options are to load, add, duplicate, remove, cut, copy, etc. To also get this menu, you can right click on the patch name and you get the same menu. So we're going to go ahead and remove the sine wave and I'm going to show you a couple of ways to load patches. We'll come back to the patch menu and say load new patch which will bring up the load patch dialog box. Over here you can see where all of the patch names are and its default location of where they are loaded in Pro Tools. Uh, if you want to see the names you can click on the little divider between name and size to see the full patch name. And we can go ahead and go down and look at some of these patches here. And we'll go ahead and take this steel string acoustic patch and load that one. Another way to load patches is through your browser. So you can click on the browser and it will go ahead and also default to your main location of where your patches are stored on your hard drive. You can come up to the structure factory libraries and click on that okay, and get different sounds. Up here you can sort or filter them um, by showing your patch, part, samples, or all. We're going to leave them all checked off right now. Um, over here your left and right arrows are your navigation to your folders previous and next. Up arrow takes you up levels on your hard drive. Um, reload will actually update the folder view in case you deleted something or changed something. The star is your favorites folder. This will actually take you to a place where you can save favorites which is always nice. To save favorites you would just click on the plus sign and it will go ahead and ask you to choose a name for the favorites entry and go ahead and add it to this part of the browser. If you'd like to delete anything from the browser, which will also delete it from the disk, the X, uh, when you click on that, will do that for you. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to our structure free samples here. And another way to select one, um, we go through and let's go ahead and look for something that would go with the acoustic guitar. So we'll try a hybrid soft pad and click and drag it into the patch menu. Um, when you go ahead and add patches down here at the bottom of the patch you can see the MIDI channel on which the patch receives information. Uh, this one's currently set to A1 and if I play it See, I'm receiving input of MIDI right here under instrument and output level. But I'm not hearing anything for the hybrid soft pad, which is currently set to A2. Okay. How I can view what I'm, or how I can hear what I'm viewing, is by clicking on the instrument and going over to structure free and port A channel 1. That'll tell you what instrument it's, it's going to play. So if I wanted to take and actually put these and layer the sounds together, I would have to change this to MIDI channel, port A, channel 1, then they would play together. 
So now that we have these two patches layered together, um, I think that we should go ahead and look at the steel string acoustic um, sample sound. We're going to solo that one. And we're going to fine tune it just a bit. So we're going to come over to edit window one and we're also going to look at edit window two. Um, but first we're going to look at the options and features here for edit window one. First one is transpose. Um, and you can transpose by octave. Or by semitones. Or you can fine tune it. Almost like you're tuning a guitar string. Um, and if you want to set it back to the beginning, you can just hold Option, click on it, and it resets to the default setting. For your pitch bend, you can go up or down, up to 24 semitones. Um, and for your voices, it's currently set to 24 for the max polyphony. You can change that up or down. But keep in mind that the more polyphony that you use, the more CPU resources that it takes up on your computer. For mono mode, you can select that or poly. And for your glide settings, you have a choice of on or off, and of course, legato, which has an incorporated rate slider. Down at the bottom, you have your key range selector, so you can change your starting key for this particular sample to be as short, as long on the keyboard as you want to. You can do that by moving those sliders there at the bottom, clicking here and typing it in, or selecting it if you have a MIDI controller keyboard. When you do have it selected, you can see that on the structure-free key keyboard at the bottom, it grays out a certain section if it's not selected. So if we're at C3 and it starts at C3, it will play, but it will not play on the grayed out samples. One other um, feature of the structure-free keyboard is its velocity sensitivity. Um, if you strike a note on the structure-free keyboard down at the bottom of the note, the velocity is higher than if you go up the note and strike it. So if you're going to use the structure-free keyboard, depending on where you're going to strike the note on the key will affect its velocity. Over here on Edit Window 2, we have our filter and our amplifiers. Um, so we can set a filter type, and if you click on it, you have choices of low pass and high pass filters. So I'll just use this one at low pass 24. Play the sample. Can adjust the cutoff. The lower I go, the darker it sounds. And you can affect your resonance frequency here. And your filter envelope. And you have a respective ADSR over here, so for your attack time of the filter, you can make it as fast or slow, and your release time. Down here for your amplifier, you can choose your velocity sensitivity, and change the attack. It's going to play the full sample when it's set all the way up to the top. Or you can make it really short, staccato sound. Okay, so great. Um, so we've gotten our steel string acoustic sound fine tuned. Let's go over and look at the hybrid soft pad. So I'm going to go ahead and solo that one and come back to edit window one. And I like pretty much the way it is here. Maybe go over to the filter. Change that one a little bit. I'm going to make it match the seal string acoustic at this point. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and unsolo that and volume-wise see how they sit together. Whether I want more of the acoustic guitar and less of the pad. So I've got them, I think, where I want them. Um, and just one more thing about the acoustic guitar. Down at the bottom, I'm gonna solo this. You have these uh, knobs down here at the bottom. Bass, so you can add some bass to the sound. Treble. Reverb. And the room size. And you can add more or less fret noises with this knob here and also change your overall release of the, the entire patch here along with your master volume. For your hybrid soft pad you'll notice that if I unsolo the steel string acoustic and then click on the hybrid soft pad the knobs at the bottom of the structure free page change. So if I solo the hybrid soft pad, now I have different parameters to work with with this patch. So reverb, chorus, cutoff, velocity, attack, and release affect the overall output of the entire patch together along with the master volume. So now that I like the way that these two patches are blended together, I'll unsolo them and play them together. What I can do is save this as a preset. I come up to my preset menu, do save settings as, and in here I can call this string soft pad and save. I want to replace the one that I already had and now go ahead and remove all the patches and say yes. So when I go ahead and click on string soft pad, it rebrings up the patches again as I had saved them with all the parameters and settings that I had chosen. Another way that you can work with structure free um, is by loading in actual wave or samples. Because it is a sample player, we can go ahead and key map samples to certain keys on the structure free keyboard. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First I'm going to remove all these patches that we currently have. And then I'm going to come over to the browser. And in the browser I'm going to select from some drum single hit samples that I have. So for this works for most file types, um, including Apple Loops and WAV files and AIFF. And come into your browser and I'm gonna look for a kick and you can preview the samples and then just drag them in under the patches we find a snare and then a hi-hat and bring them in. And since I want them all to play at the same time, I want to make sure that they're set to the same port A MIDI channel 1 setting. So I'm going to go ahead and change all these to port A MIDI channel 1. Now you'll notice they're all going to play at the same time. So what I want to do is assign them to their own keys. So I come back over to the main menu and come over to key range. I'm going to highlight and select the kick 
patch, come down to key range and make this C3. So that now is the only note assigned in the structure free keypad for the kick. Then I'm going to come over and highlight snare. And I want that one to work with D3. So key range, I'm going to hit D3 on my MIDI controller. D is now going to be my snare. For hi-hat, E3. So this is a great way that you can then take and map out an entire uh, drum kit to your um, keypad. And you can work with the samples a little bit and fine tune them. So if we go into edit window 2, you want to make sure that it plays the entire sample by bringing up the release on the amplifier. For the kick. I had and of course you can put filters on them change the cutoff and then come over to your structure free menu and play a little drum kit so that's another great way that you can use samples in Structure Free and set them up and key map them to your MIDI controller keypad. If you like this drum kit, you can save it in your presets by coming up to the preset menu, doing save settings as, typing in whatever it is, drum kit sample, doing save, and it is then saved as a preset in your library and menu. Um, so even if you do, like I did before, remove all patches, I have my stored drum kit sample along with my string soft pad now saved in my presets. So I hope this tutorial gives you a little overview of Structure Free and you're a little more familiar in using it. It's a great, powerful sampling tool that you can use within Pro Tools. Uh, you can have up to four instances of instruments at one time. So if I do have like the steel string acoustic and the soft pad here, I can add two more, just like I can and expand two. Um, it is an upgradable plugin, so you can add more patches that will play at more times, and you can get versions that do allow you multiple outputs of each individual patch to be recorded in audio tracks and Pro Tools. So it is a great plugin. Um, I hope you enjoy using it and thank you for watching this tutorial.